Welcome. Our topic today will focus on understanding the next generation science standards. But before we can begin discussing the next generation science standards, we need to understand the content on which they focus, and that is science. Let's begin by asking, what is science? Why? Because only by asking ourselves this question can we understand what it is that we want our students to know and be able to do with science. So what is science? Science is a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe. You'll notice the word testable here. This means that science is an active process of experimentation. Knowledge in science is gained by a gradual synthesis of information from different experiments by various researchers across different domains of science. It's more like a climb than a leap. In other words, it's a continual process. And this is something when we teach science we need to project to our students. Science is not just one experiment or one project. Every experiment builds on what was previously learned and will become a building block for the next question or experiment. Science involves experimentation, and this experimentation is especially important in science to help establish causational relationships and to avoid correlation fallacy. Perhaps this is the most important bullet on this slide. Science is experimentation. Science is not the same as critical thinking. It uses critical thinking, but it is more than that. It involves experimentation, as well as the synthesis of information, the synthesis of specific scientific information. So now that we've defined what science is, we're ready to move on to a better understanding of the next generation science standards. And the question here is, why a push for new science standards? Here are some answers. In 2009, only 1 to 2% of children scored at advanced levels on the National Assessment of Educational Progress. And there has been no significant change in these standings from 2009 to 2011. Here's some additional data from that 2009 NAEP study. We see that in fourth grade, only about 30% of students tested scored at or above the level of proficiency. We would expect to see an increase in proficiency as students progress through school. Instead, we find that rather than an increase in science understanding, we see a decrease as we move from middle to high school. What we see here is that over the last decade, U.S. students do not have the science content or skills to advance into the new century. In a world in which innovation will be a necessity and jobs will be increasingly technological and science and math driven. The National Research Council, which is composed of scientists, addressed this question and they came up with several principles to help guide what we should be doing to help students learn how to think scientifically. This is a K-12 framework for science education and the next generation science standards developed from the tenets of the framework for K-12 science education. What we see here are going to be some basic principles that the National Research Council developed as they thought about the question of how do we want students to learn science. One of the first principles is that children are born investigators. When you look at how a child first sees, observes, and tests the world, you see that the way they think of it is very much the way scientists would structure their own thinking. Scientific understanding develops over time. In the research arena, science understanding develops over time because of advances in science. Within the classroom and school setting, understanding develops over time because of students' cognitive development and integration of other subjects, such as math. Therefore, we would expect students' understanding of something like electricity 
to develop over time as he or she moves from concrete concepts like batteries and circuits to more abstract concepts like electron flow through wires. Science is more than just a body of knowledge. As a scientist, I could read about infection, but in order to answer the question, how does infection affect our muscles? I need to perform research. Likewise, in order for students to understand a concept like force, it is necessary for them not only to read information about force, but also to measure force and perform experiments to answer that question. It is important to connect students' science concepts with their own experiences and interests and to promote equality in teaching science. And we have done that over the past decade through examples and activities that are tied to what we think will interest them and what we see as fun and exciting. However, this hasn't been enough. We see that from the statistics of how students perform on national and international tests. And the reason why our students' scores have not improved is because too little attention is paid to how students' understanding of an idea can be built on from grade to grade. We have not adhered to the principle that understanding develops over time. And yet research strongly suggests that a more effective way to approach science and learning and teaching is to teach and develop systematically an understanding of the core ideas of science over a period of years rather than weeks or months. So the next question becomes, what are these core ideas? The National Research Council defined these core ideas as concepts that are central to understanding science. Large, overarching principles that involve all scientific disciplines. The next generation science standards were developed directly from the K-12 science framework and they consist of three important parts. Cross-cutting concepts, scientific content, and practices of science. The first part are the cross-cutting concepts. We've just seen examples of these in the previous slide. Cross-cutting concepts have application across all domains of science. They link different domains of science, and they interrelate knowledge from various science fields into a coherent and scientifically based view of the world. The second component of the next generation science standards is science content. Next generation science standards and the K-12 framework refer to science content as disciplinary core ideas. These were identified by breaking the cross-cutting concepts into smaller conceptual ideas, such as properties of matter and chemical changes. The third component of the next generation science standards are the practices of science. In other words, investigating conceptual questions and conducting experiments to help students understand concepts. You'll notice here, the key is that experiments are the center of the next generation science standards, as they should be in any science curriculum. Experiments should provide the mechanism by which students learn science concepts and the skills associated with science. Only by doing science can students truly understand the scientific process, the variables that affect scientific principles, and the way in which scientific questions are asked and answered. So now we've discussed how the next generation science standards were developed. Let's take a look at how they are set up and what you need to know to implement them in your school and use them to develop students who will understand science. What you are looking at here is one example of a content standard. This happens to be a kindergarten standard. Here you will see the three central tenets of the K-12 framework and next generation science standards. Cross-cutting concepts, content or disciplinary core ideas, and practices. And we've moved these components into the next generation science standard format so that you can see the three rectangular boxes called foundation boxes and how they align with cross-cutting concepts disciplinary core ideas and practices. What the standards have done is to create a way to assess 
whether students understand science because they practice science and integrate the experiments with the concept. The circled area are performance expectations. What students should be able to do in order to understand the standard. In this case, properties of matter. The performance expectations are composed of the practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts. The standards always start with the experiment. Here you can see design and conduct an investigation. It is tightly linked to the concept. Here we see the disciplinary core idea that different kinds of materials are needed and students need to be able to describe their observable properties and classify the materials. And then the performance expectation links that concept to the larger cross-cutting ideas of patterns. What these standards are saying is that in order to understand properties of matter, students need to observe and handle different types of materials conduct experiments to observe their properties, and categorize them based on their own experiments and observations. Then discuss how what they observed and recorded connects to the concepts of the structure of matter and how this relates to the ideas of patterns. In addition, next generation science standards have created correlation boxes. The top connection box emphasizes how what you do in the science lab and through hands-on experiments is and needs to be connected to the science concept and experiments in other grades and within the same grade so that students have multiple opportunities to investigate, observe, and connect different components of the concept. Two other connection boxes emphasize correlations with English language arts and math. Connecting science with ELA is important because students need to be able to communicate their hypotheses, predictions, results and conclusions effectively, and to be able to read procedures and protocols. Correlations with math is essential. This connection box illustrates that science uses mathematics as a way of communicating and understanding science. What we finished dissecting was just one standard in one grade. But what you see here is that the same setup exists for the standards in kindergarten through fifth grade. Now, if we take a look at grades six through 12, what you'll notice is that there is no longer a grade by grade approach. Instead, the next generation science standards expect that like the K-5 curriculum, middle school and high school will be completely integrated. All right, let's take a moment to think about what we've seen and discussed. We've seen the structure of the next generation science standards, the nitty gritty of performance expectations, foundations and connection boxes, and the philosophy of developing students' understanding of science over time. One of the three shapes in that next generation logo were the practices of science. This means performing experiments, using scientific tools, and creating experimental designs. And we find that research really does bear this out. Okay, so we've established that in order to implement the next generation science standards, you need a lab. What types of things do you need to consider in order to build and supply your lab? You'll need to decide who will select the science equipment. Will it be the principal, a science teacher? Who has the expertise to determine which scientific equipment to buy? How many pieces of equipment will you need? Will they be reliable, durable? The next thing you'll need to do is create the experiments, write lesson plans, develop performance and other assessments, and all of these will need to be correlated with the next generation science standards. Once the experiments, lesson plans, assessments have been designed, you'll need to spiral the concepts and experiments throughout the curriculum so that students learn the concepts multiple times in multiple grades with increasing complexity so that they develop their understanding of the science concept over time. In addition, you'll need to correlate the science curriculum with the common core math and ELA standards. Or you can use what cognitive learning systems spent over a decade designing, developing, testing, and refining. 
the Lab Learner Science Program. It has as its central focus a lab, a lab that can be installed in any elementary or middle school classroom and includes lab table stools and over 400 different pieces of equipment and supplies. Students learn science concepts by performing their own experiments, collecting their own data, and creating conclusions based on their own results. Units include concepts such as heat and heat transfer, electricity, and genes and proteins. The Lab Learner program is designed so that scientific equipment is used and scientific concepts are addressed multiple times within a grade and between grades so the concepts and science practices spiral through the curriculum. In addition, we've created over 1,000 correlations with Common Core math and ELA standards. Here's another way to look at Lab Learner and the Next Generation Science Standards. What you see here are the Lab Learner units along the vertical axis and the Next Generation Science Standard core ideas along the x-axis. You can see that the Lab Learner program aligns conceptually with the disciplinary core ideas of the Next Generation Science Standards. In addition, you see the right side of the matrix includes skills, analyses, and cognitive processes that are so important for scientific thinking. So in addition to just meeting the Next Generation Science Standards, you are developing a way for your students to practice science and think scientifically. This is why we call this Lab Learner Next Generation Science Standards Plus.